Welcome to Dorker Realms. While most gamers will be familiar with Dungeons & Dragons from the newest edition of the game, there is a movement among some players called the Old School Revival, taking inspiration from the design philosophy of the earliest editions of D&D and bringing them into the modern era. These games and adventures emphasize the weird, the challenging, and the hardcore. Bear witness as our intrepid players explore unusual and dangerous tales in these old school adventures. This is part two of Deep Carbon Observatory. Though the adventures can be listened to in any order, we recommend beginning with the first episode of any given adventure. We go now to the table to delve into Dorker Realms. As Petra cracks open the cellar door, the yes. smell of rotting meat and death wafts up. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Welcome back to Dorker Realms, everyone. I <laughs> thought it would be exciting to have a dramatic intro. In media res, <laughs> a cold open. So Petra takes a step back as she swings the doors open fully, and immediately two starving, raggedy-dressed people with chipped, dirty daggers come rushing up the cellar steps. Roll for initiative. Okay. Man. I just realized Petra's been, like, walking around in, like, full plate armor this entire time with, like, a sword. Yep. Just because, like... All we can say is that we hope that Petra painted her armor that black paint that keeps it from rusting. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I guess I made some assumptions about the magicalness of it. <laughs> oh, it's just... It's, a... it's fine. <laughs> Alternately, you could let it rust, and then it might fall off. Hey. <laughs> I'm <idea>. free! <laughs> oh, God, this rash is everywhere. <laughs> you smell rotting meat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it came from the cellar, but... Turns out it was me. <laughs> God, her skin's just terrible looking. Um, uh, Bindel, about that magic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, make her giant. <laughs> she just bursts. Or she Big pops. Smashes through the cellar doors. Sorry, I, I guess it, it's just my uh, agility bonus, is it, is it right? Uh, I think so. We've got an 18. All right. You go first. They're not fast. Petra will, cla <laughs> will cast Holy Sanctuary. That is a 21 creature, so they're compelled to attack other targets if they can. Creatures of three hit die or less cannot attack the cleric in any manner. Uh, creatures of four hit die or more may attempt a will save to resist it. Um, this effect lasts for one turn, is immediately dispelled if the cleric attacks or takes aggressive action in any way. Did that say that they would attack... If there were other targets here, they would have to attack them instead. Oh, okay, but they don't have to attack like for each other, for instance. No, or do they? They just, if they, they cannot attack me if they're in a fight. Okay. And they want to attack something, they have to attack something other than me. But they don't have to attack each other. No. Okay. Um, so yeah, that would be Petra's turn. Uh, so for their turn, they just stand there, really wanting to attack Petra, but. They don't know why they can't. They're just like... <laughs> and then it's Petra's turn again. Cast Paralysis at one of these um, pale figures. Okay. What was the duration on your sanctuary, by the one way? One turn. Okay. Or until I make an aggressive action. Okay. Um, this, I also cast a 21... So I get to designate one creature within 30 feet and paralyze it with a word. If it's two hit die or less, it's automatically paralyzed. If it's three hit die or more, it receives a will save. It lasts for uh, 11 rounds. All right, so what's the word that you paralyze them with? <laughs> she, she, she gestures with her holy symbol and says, Peace, be still. I would have gone with, No! <laughs> Bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that one's paralyzed, and the other one still can't attack you. No, that's an aggressive. I believe oh, that that's an aggressive. aggressive? Oh, okay. I cast a spell at a creature. All right. So, so the other one's gonna try and stab you now. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Try being the operative word. Petra has now been attacked and uh, is therefore okay, feels okay to rev her chain sword and just cut through. Lethal force authorized. <laughs> <laughs> See, God, they hit me first. No. <laughs> oh, I wasn't watching. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, You're good, yeah. Petra. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a con- it's an optical god. <laughs> since she has turned these before, then they count as unholy creatures. Okay, then that will be a plus six, uh, and that's an 18. Oh, you super hit. <laughs> that will do um, eight damage. You just saw this yeah. dirty cannibal in half. And they fall, two halves fall back into the cellar. All right, it's Petra's turn. Petra will, uh, is there any, like... Since the town's been falling, is there any, like, boards or, or, or pieces of wood in the alleyway? Yes. Okay, she's going to shut the cellar doors again and then brace them closed <laughs> with, like, a, a board. All right. Um, and then she'll tie this guy up. So uh, as you're tying up that one, you hear some, like, banging on the inside of the cellar door as whoever's still inside there tried to, like probably check if you were gone, but now they can't get out, and so the banging becomes a little more desperate, but they can't get out, and you've successfully tied up this uh, specific cannibal. Then uh, she'll start questioning it, him, him? Yes, Once the paralysis wears off, if you want to move on to some other people, or do we want to finish this up? Uh, We will move on to Reza, checking out the, uh, the scholar who was being robbed, as you are making your way there, the uh, the child manages to get a good grip on the bag and tear it free and oh, take damn. a few steps, but you can still get there Is before. It the s- okay. It's not the same child. Okay, okay. <laughs> if, if you are curious. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I like go to grapple the child, I guess? All right, so they're like trying to make their run for it when Reza comes out and grabs them. And he's like, no, please, please let me go. I just do a German soup. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the child's unconscious now. Oh, I didn't have to roll for it. Because <laughs> I could suplex myself on accident. <laughs> no, you don't have to roll to suplex a small child. You can just have that one. Uh, uh, Paul, out of character, leaves the house and goes find a child to suplex. <laughs> okay, I pick up the scrolls. <laughs> It's a non-lethal suplex. Only paralysis, right? <laughs> For the rest of their life. Uh, and then I, uh, He's going to German them on to, like, head first onto, like, a rock. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> See, he's fine. There's, like, clearly a crack and flies. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I gather the stuff. and like, oh, I'm sorry I had to deal with that. This place has gone balls to the walls crazy. Let me hand the bag to her, and then. Uh, so uh, as you're as you're putting the scrolls together to uh, put them back in the satchel. the sa- the satchel, uh, most of them have like that kind of fancy writing that you would associate with uh, magical scrolls, but you do catch a glimpse of one that's just uh, basically just one sentence that says. Above the golem's path, where stone meets stone, seek the door that is not. And that's it. And uh, then you, you get the, I the satchel a, together. I make a mental note. <laughs> Updated my journal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> my quest log and my HUD. And uh, the scholar, she like smiles and uh, takes the satchel back when you bring it back to her. Oh, thank you so much, kind I, sir. Before I brought it back to her, how far was I? Uh, maybe like ten paces or so. Is there any sleight of hand where I could steal one of the scrolls? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, steel roll. <laughs> it's wow, that was stupid. I don't know how much a, a five is going to get helped, but uh, that's what I rolled. So you uh, skillfully slip one of the scrolls oh. into your uh, pocket. Sure. Sleeve? I have a hood. <laughs> uh, I assume one of the magic scrolls, not the... Yeah. All right. So let's see. Uh, just write scroll number three. Cool. Since you don't know what it is, but that way I know what it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. 
So she's she's very grateful. Thank you so much. Those scrolls were so valuable. Uh, I yeah. came here to to investigate the old legends about this place, but I never imagined uh, well, such a disaster would happen just when I arrived. Yeah, we've been uh, doing damage control. Um, do, do you need any companions to help you? Uh, well, I think I'm not going to set out up that way, given everything that's happened. I don't want to be like those foolish wizards rushed out there. Oh, tell me more. Oh, there were these two ridiculous wizards. What were their names? Valerian uh, and Bedell. Cool House and Behavior, I think they called themselves. Uh, one of them was Dutch and very fat. <laughs> I have a thyroid problem. <laughs> the, the other one was so skinny, and he had this terrible hat. It's like, have you ever had a flan before? Have you ever seen a collapsed flan? <laughs> it's the only way I can describe his hat. A beret? It was ridiculous. <laughs> okay. I don't think they're going to make it very far. I hope that hat is magical, and I hope I get it. <laughs> they were already bickering as they were leaving on their little canoe. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, uh, pleasure doing service with you. <laughs> I guess this is where we part ways. <laughs> Thank you once again. Yep. Meanwhile, uh, as Bindel approaches the crowd, <laughs> you, you hear accusations and people uh, screaming about how one of these sailors stole a pack from one of the townspeople, and they're like passing the rope around and they're grabbing him, and you see a pack lying in the dirt. Is it this pack? Uh, everyone goes completely quiet, and they turn and look, and the villagers like, "Yeah, that's it." Uh, the the sailor like shoves the villagers away from him. He's like, "I told you I didn't have nothing to do with that. You damn fools! If you hadn't been in such an uproar, you'd have seen it in seconds." Thank uh, you, sir. I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> Just doing my duty as a friendly giant. <laughs> Listen, I, I sail aboard the Lapitan under Captain Zarathusa. Uh, if you need anything, just come by later and I'll gladly help you out. We have some spare food if you need it. Not that I'd give any to these bastards. We're pretty well stocked, but I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, sir. At the words well stocked, the, uh, the crowd, like, Kind of turns their attention to Bindel and scoots a bit closer. Uh -oh. do, do you have anything to spare, sir? Look at me! How much <laughs> do you think I need a day? Ha 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 ha! Here's your backpack. Thank you, sir. This is Father Christmas. This is the... <laughs> Come closer, Life child. Life is good. <laughs> Life is nice. All right, so... Valerian has been collecting more gold dust. Yep. You amass two more pilets oh boy. to make the pile grow yet larger. Four, four, four pilets. Pile <laughs> yeah. of pilets. Yeah. A large pile consisting of four pilets, if you will. When you get ten pilets, you get a super pile. How many more bodies are there to go through? Uh, I Dozens. mean, you this could. This is all yeah. from one body. No, this <laughs> is from. Four bodies, but uh, the, I mean, the, a lot of people died in the flood. How uh, close is he to the river from here? Very close. Pushes the bodies he's drained back into the water. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks like. How long is it, has this been? Uh, maybe like ten to fifteen minutes of sheer chaos and scurrying from place to place. Kind of looks at the pile in his hand. And then looks back at the body, thinks about why he's here, shrugs, puts the rest of the pile in the um, Clydesdale, and casts Scorching Ray on the pile of bodies. All right. <laughs> Give him a little Viking funeral. Maybe. Uh, it's cremation. Maybe they fail the roll. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Lost failure. Well, the spell doesn't work, and you can't cast it again. 
until you rest. Yes. Yeah. Now you gotta keep searching through bodies because clearly that's what you're supposed to be doing. No, he's gonna start rolling them into the river. All right. Petra has this person tied up. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And now I'm going to describe once again three situations. This is happening as you're waiting for them to become unparalyzed, basically. Okay. Uh, you will see the first two. Uh, once again, Reza will see all three, and Bindel will see the last two, just like last time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Easy to remember. So, the first, you see a woman who looks to be some kind of authority figure, and she is facing down a group of well-armed mercenaries. The second thing you see is a bishop in rags tottering on the roof of his church, staring upriver. And he looks like uh, he's not in a great place right now. And finally, you see a large, very nice ship uh, in the harbor, which is most likely the, Lapita the Latipan, although only uh, Vindel would know the name of the ship right now. And there is a mob that has formed around it of refugees, and sailors are uh, armed with swords, preparing to violently disperse the crowd from their ship. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Sing. All right, I'm going to the ship. I'm going to the bishop. Petra's going to the authority figure. <laughs> Because I can only... You're like, in sync. You're in yeah. perfect sync. I'm a thief. I can only help, like, one person. <laughs> you have to pick the small stuff. All right. So, we will begin with Petra once again. Okay. Are you bringing the cannibal with you? <laughs> uh, Put a chain on him, and then you can walk him like a dog. Yeah, that's, that's basically the plan, is to lead him with the rope, because she wants to present the cannibal to the authority figure, but she has to save the authority figure first, uh, potentially. Um, so, what she's going to do is, uh, can I see the book again? Oh, it's right here. She's going to cast Word of Command on her cannibal to <laughs> command it to stay. And on then... her cannibal! <laughs> <gasps> Ooh, a new pet for the party. <laughs> and then... And then she's going to go help the authority figure. Okay. All right, that will be um, a uh, fifteen. It gets a uh, gets a wisdom saving throw uh, against the check I made. They fail. Okay, so it has to obey the command for twelve rounds. Okay. Oh no, no wait! I only have plus four. Sorry, ten rounds. Okay. All right. So yes, she says, Jack. <laughs> And then goes to help the authority figure. All right. So as you approach, uh, the team of mercenaries uh, is six in total, though three of them appear to be kind of the center of the group. One of them is a uh, blonde, bearded giant wearing a broadsword and uh, a bronze eagle chest plate. The other is a female sorceress, and one half of her body is beautiful, and the other half is super wizened and gnarled like a really old woman. And the third is a like a tattooed monk looking guy with like a, a glowing mace and a, a big smile on his face. Then there's like three tough looking, just kind of like your average soldier types. And then there's a group of odd looking scouts in the background and the woman She's just like your average villager, but she looks pretty, like, sturdy, and she's kind of staring them down. And the giant is, like, walking back and forth, and he's like, Listen, Rod, you got a real oh. nice, you got a real nice village here, but you, things are slipping out of control. You need someone to tighten their grip and keep things under control. And we're willing to help you out. You're actually pretty lucky, because you've got the legendary mercenary Alfredo Jan here to help you with his companions, Vesturok and the Dermater. He's like, and I told you before, we don't need your type here in our town. Oh, you don't need our type here in your town. You've got bodies flowing down the street, and it looks like there's about to be some more. 
you know what I mean. <laughs> Petra, your entrance? <clears throat> um, with her glowing halo over her head because of her blessed amulet, she strides forward and says, She's right. She has people to help her who do not want to prey on their goodwill, like me and my companions. <laughs> the oh, and who are you supposed to be? Maybe you don't know who you're talking to. I am Alfredo Jan, the legendary adventurer, with my two companions, Vesturok and the Dermater. You really think that you can step up to us? <laughs> and the Dermater. <laughs> You seem to be hesitating a little bit, which is natural when you're in the presence of Alfredo Jan, Vesturok, and the Dermater. <laughs> <sighs> if I wanted to, I could squash you like a bug. A bug on the heel of the boot of Alfredo Jan. She, she... Completely disregarding his tirade, she turns to the woman and says, What is exactly they are wanting and why is it a problem for you, John? These thugs want to be paid to be the official enforcers of this town. Protection racket. Exactly. Mm. This is they've been asking before? Well, they only arrived recently. I assume they would have gone off on some ill-fated adventure. Ooh, no adventure is ill-fated when it's partaken by Alfredo Jan, Festerock, and the Dermater. She's like, she shakes her head, and she's like, these, these thugs have just seen this as an opportunity to take advantage of the town's situation. Enough talk, little lady! What's it gonna be? I mean, look at us! Look at us! Look at Alfredo, Jan, Vesturok, and the Dermater, and tell me that you think that you can do a better job than we can. We already are. We are doing stuff and not demanding to be paid first. We have already saved people. You are posturing. Oh, you think I'm posturing, huh? How about I come over there and I show you how much I'm not posturing? What do you think about that, huh? Would it be just you, or would your uh, followers uh, stab me in the back when you were things were going bad for you? Nothing goes bad for Alfredo Jan. And even though he makes a great team with Vesturok and the Dermader, he can handle you just fine by himself. So you don't want none of this. You want to turn and walk away. I don't want it, but you will not leave... Even when you are presented with no. You sound pretty firm there, little buddy. You sure about this? You sure? You sure? You sure you want to step into the ring with Alfredo Jan? I'm sure I would rather not, but I will not let you prey on these people. Well, unfortunately, I don't have time for you right now. Because Alfredo Jan, Vesturok, and the Dermater have some treasure to go find up river. But I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. I didn't catch your name. Vindelgence. <laughs> <laughs> and just walk off through. Petra of the Holy Cross, I have been sent here by God. All right, Petra of the Holy Cross, sent here by God. You haven't seen the last of Alfredo Jan, Vesturok, and the Dermater. And then they just leave. Danny. And we never see them again. <laughs> yes. I love you. <laughs> that was amazing. That was Thank you. Great. Why did he carry his belt over his shoulder? <laughs> I mean, I just put it around my, my pants. <sighs> the uh, woman breathes a sigh of relief as the armed group finally leaves. Thank you, Petra. Uh, and what is your name? I, in the scuffle I was not able to get. Uh, I'm Starry Hrod. I'm uh, basically the mayor of this town, or what's left of it. I'm 
dreadfully worried that they won't be the last of their type that we see. There's rumors flying around about a great treasure that's been unearthed up to the north, and frankly, the last thing I want is the gold rush of scumbag adventurers descending on our town. Well, me and my four companions also came to the town. Mm. Four companions? Did I say four? <coughs> yes, the goat. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> me and my three companions uh, arrived here because, well, not to put too fine a point on it, like I told um, Mr. Jen, I received a vision from God that I needed to come and stop people from finding the powerful treasure that is located there. Well. We are here for that, but we are not here to take advantage. As I said before, we have been helping people. That was not exaggeration. In fact, I have <clears> over here, I thought you looked like authority figure, I found some people um, cannibalizing the Jed. What? As if we didn't have enough problems to deal with. Well, the cells are underwater. I can really only think of one thing to do with them in this situation. Though it isn't a pleasant business. There will be a quick judgment. Indeed. I couldn't ask you to perform it after everything that's happened. I was checked and had to dispatch one already. Perfectly understandable. Um, if you have more organizing of your people to do, I will not burden you with this. I, I would anomaly. appreciate it greatly. If you're heading north as you said, to investigate potential treasure. I can provide you with a skiff for going upriver. It's pretty deep right now, so traveling on foot would not be advisable. That would be very helpful. Oh, I'd be glad to do so. We're master skippers, too. <laughs> By this time. <laughs> and uh, if, uh, if you don't find any treasure, which I kind of hope you don't because I don't want to deal with more of their type mm. uh, I would gladly pay you 5,000 gold for an accurate report on just how nothing you found up there to dissuade any others from coming and an additional 1,000 gold if you can provide any hard evidence that there's nothing there <laughs> Brian's sure. like, wait a second. <laughs> we just take everything, and then there's nothing there. We <laughs> took everything. Um, we will be sure to stop by after we make our visit. Thank you. I'll, I'll be waiting for you. I'll be right over in this uh, mostly intact house that I've been using as a... Do you not have any sort of organized guard? Not anymore. Uh, did they get... The guardhouse got wiped away. <laughs> it's underwater now. Mm. Well, at well, least I assume. I saw it get swept out to sea with all the guards still inside it. Oh. That is we don't train them how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> that is most unfortunate. Well, They were having a parade. They were all in their armor. Oh, God, they didn't <laughs> stand a chance. <laughs> so many straps. Really strapped in. <laughs> Perhaps if we find any more honorable people that are willing to help, maybe we can send them your way. Um, and just so you know, we have found a safe place for the teacher and a, a bunch of children. If you can find any parents looking for kids, send them that way. I will. Thank you. But Seems like you've done us a great service already, Petra. It is what we do. And she'll, I guess, move off to try and find her companions again. All right. <clears throat> We go now to... Oh, she will... Um, I guess she'll probably just like decapitate the cannibal. And take All right. the back. Sure. <laughs> it's a... I need this back. <laughs> I don't want to lose any rope either by just tying you to something. No, I need <laughs> that rope. I need all of the rope. <laughs> you always need... All right, so Reva was heading towards the church. Did I just say Reva? You <laughs> did. Reza was heading to the church. Look, you've been saying a lot of crazy names today. <laughs> so Names like Alfredo Jan, Vesterok, Alfredo and the Derm <laughs> All right. So I'm headed off to the church where I see the bishop. Yeah, he's standing on the roof and staring off at the dark pillar rising in the distance where the river disappears. And he's just perched up there. 
Doesn't look like he's in a good place. No, I, I call to him. He no! Bishop! Guy! He, he doesn't seem to respond to uh, you calling out to him. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm on higher ground than this roof? Or... No. No. It's like, the, the, the church is pretty secure, so oh, okay. you're on the ground floor and he's like way up there. And he's like pretty close to the edge right now. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> he didn't respond to my calls, but I don't even know if he heard me. Uh, I'll grappling hook up. Okay. And try to climb and meet him. I mean, you could go inside and like get up as well. But you can also do that if you want to. I'm just letting you know. There is, I guess, the easy way. I, I don't know, yeah. But you wouldn't have eyes on them and you might fall off while you're going up the stairs. Yes, fall. I just hear thud and go, <laughs> all right, well, time to rob the church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'll go up the rope. Are you right. lawful? Huh? <laughs> huh? Are you lawful? <laughs> uh, salvage. I'm here for salvage. <laughs> I, I'm very neutral. <laughs> I think I was neutral. I just, when I wrote that down, I realized that you get that free thing when you create your character. The righteous heart thing. Except that doesn't affect you. I know it doesn't. I'm just now reminded why. Gotcha. Yeah, you're fine. You don't even have to yeah. roll for this. <laughs> Rope okay. plus yeah. architecture. Yeah, no no roll necessary. You you get up there. Okay, and Assassin's Creed it. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're up hard. there in a like a flash. Okay. And uh, as you get closer, you can hear the bishop muttering, the spoon, the spoon. And then I go, the cat's in the cradle. <laughs> And he, he seems like he takes a little half step forward, so his feet are now like halfway off the edge. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to grapple him with my, without cutting into him, like lasso him. All right, you lasso him, and he's like, huh? Oh! I, I pull back and as fast as I can. pull back, and he falls backwards over onto the oh, roof of okay. the, and he's like, what, what in tarnation? Dude, you were about to jump. This. He kept the, muttering spoon. The spoon. Oh, shit. The spoon. Now I got him going again. <laughs> they took the spoon. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we all take stuff. <laughs> Who are you? The guy that's forgiving you. You don't have to feel bad about it anymore. It was our most precious relic. And you're keeping it safe. Unless you did something unholy to it. They took it. They oh. took the spoon. We've lost it. Who's? I can get it back. It's a spoon. I can make you a spoon. It's I've made gone. a time cube. No, I'm kidding. it's gone. <laughs> it's it's gone. It was there, and then it was just gone. The spoon. Dude, look, bro, <laughs> bro, bro, bro. That spoon was it's... entrusted to us by the optical god. Okay, well, get back, man. How? It's gone. It's lost. Look, I do this all the time. I'll put something somewhere and then forget I put it there. <laughs> when you say lost, what do you... And they... There's a lot of pronouns here. It's gone. It was in the altar and now it's not. It's gone. The spoon is gone. All is lost. They're going to starve and it's all our fault. We lost the spoon. You can eat without a spoon. No, you... Fool, the spoon is a blessed artifact of the optical god. It could feed us all in our time of need. Well, don't kill yourself. You're gonna starve. Eat <laughs> it out. I think, but I failed. I failed the optical god. <sighs> Let him deal with you. Don't take your life into your hands. You're right. I don't have that right. Exactly. I failed him. I was married and he once must too. Decide my punishment. There you go. Oh wait, you don't have like a wheel of pain or something that you spin. What? You know, What's there's that? no like <laughs> games of chance where you hurt yourself according to what it lands on. No. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Oh, spoon. Hey. What's it look like? It's it's a little. You know what a spoon looks like, right? <laughs> I am only familiar with ladles and spoons, uh, tea and <laughs> soup. Okay, well, it's a smaller than a ladle. Most things are, but anything can be a ladle. You could be a ladle. What is happening? 
It's spoon talk with me and the bishop. <laughs> it's a it's a small metallic spoon. It's like a smaller version of a ladle for personal use. Okay. Is there any inscriptions? No. Can we detect magic of some yes, sort? Yes. Okay. Certainly. I know a lady, and a a guy, and then a short Asian guy. <laughs> It's weird that they're even Did here. Did the optical god send you to us, stranger? You know what? Per yeah. Actually. <laughs> Thank we you. We spent like a few weeks just walking here for no reason. And then all this happened. He hasn't abandoned us after all. Yeah. Yeah, you got the A squad. Thank if you. Look you. Out, if you turn around somewhere, you can see a giant man <laughs> giving stuff to people. Bless you. Bless you, heroes. Heroes of the optical god. Yeah, pump your brakes, though, all right? <laughs> Just uh, wait till we actually do something. You already have. Okay, hey, just remember, buddy. I forgive you. Thank you. <laughs> Give me my rope. <laughs> <laughs> Look, apparently this party really values ropes. I'm going to keep with that theme. I don't behead him, though. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I saved your life, but I need my rope back. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's a fair distinction to make. Okay. I mean, anything else I should do? Is there anything that catches my thief's eye? Uh, not in the outside of the church. Okay. Well, I go down the stairs now that I know uh, I don't okay. have to, you like... Wanna go inside the proper way. Yeah, and just like look around, see where the thing was stashed, see if there's any clues. So, the church looks like your typical church that you're familiar with, but above the altar, there's a concave mirror on a large metallic stock, and in one of the stained glass windows, a lens-headed god waves a spoon at a delighted but starving crowd. And in the votive corner are a lot of ceremonial broken clay bowls. And there are two acolytes still in the church that are just kind of like standing around dazed. Okay, I yelled at the two acolytes. Yo! Are uh, you upset? <laughs> as soon as you like say something, they like snap and they're like, Oh my god, the spoon! Yeah, they yeah, run yeah. to the altar and they hey, throw hey. open the altar okay. top and they're like, No! And then I stand there just going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The spoon! Yep, the spoon, the spoon. They're all gonna starve. I should kill myself. I failed the spoon. Da 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 da. Wait, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, you, are you doing all right? Are you having dark thoughts? Yes! <laughs> Oh, no. I'm I know just... that these are hard times, but even now, the optical god hasn't abandoned us. Okay, yeah. I was sent by the optical god. Uh, yeah, I'm in, yeah, I'm here to investigate the spoon, the bishop oh. upstairs. Just, oh, praise him. Yeah, just I just Thank need to snap you. all of you out of that. You you're all were kind of like doing that open it, mouth thing. It was our most precious treasure, and we failed in our duty to protect it. Oh, but the optical god in all his wisdom sent you to us. Yep. Thank you. I'm pretty impressive without doing anything. You are. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, just, uh, you know, keep the faith. Uh, good to see that you're in good spirits, and uh, I'll have that spoon here in no time. We will. Thank you, Avatar. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> How many stories is this? Like Two story? Yeah. I mean, what's the, like, typical, like, country medieval church? One like, story? With a, one story? With a tower, usually, yeah. Yeah. Probably two in this case, just because we had the threat of the bishop <coughs> killing himself, so, like, it yeah. needs to be two. I didn't need him just break his arm. <laughs> <laughs> and go back up and try like, to... Yeah, okay, you'll fall to hurt, but you ain't gonna kill yourself. Well, you can kill yourself if it's a head-down dive. I mean, yeah, okay, no. Meanwhile... I cast shield on the way to the crowd so I can get that sweet, sweet cast bonus for what I actually want to do. Sure. Unfortunately, the shield is a normal size shield. It only protects like a kneecap. All right. So I get there. Is there anything apparent that I need to... All right. So the crew of the ship, you want to say about 20 sailors all armed with uh, scimitars. They're all like up against the, the boarding ramp, which like this, this crowd of desperate 
hungry refugees have started to like push their way up forcefully and you can tell things are going to get violent to uh, any second how many uh is in the crowd roughly maybe like 40 to 50 people okay. Shit time. all right i want this to be really cool so i'm going to burn two strength to give myself a sweet little bonus to my spell casting of sleep <laughs> nice Come on, roll really high. Oh, I don't think that'll actually do anything at all. Um, so, six plus another seven, so 13, so 16. Two people fall asleep. <laughs> do they even notice that? I'll, I'll cast a second time if I have time to do that. Uh. Ah. Oh, how are you, like, are you just standing, like... At the back of the crowd. At the back of the crowd. Sleep. Yeah. Um, you can attempt it if you want to. That's ominous, but yes, I will try it, too. <laughs> All right, so I, I do nothing. All right, so as you're in the back attempting magic, uh, a fight breaks out and the sailors begin uh, attacking the crowd with their scimitars. Uh, I guess I'll try and like break up what I can from the back at this point, but I'm not going to like get in the way of scimitar swinging. Uh, all right. Oh, I thought you were just going to fall on them and make like a big <laughs> snow angel. So the crowd disperses uh, pretty quickly and you manage to uh, drag a few people away and kind of stop them from getting trampled or like charging into the fight. Uh, they don't really stand a chance against the sailors, but maybe like Ten or so people are cut down in the scuffle, and their bodies topple off the ramp, and uh, it's a pretty sad sight, but the, the violence is over pretty quickly, and you do help a little bit. I'm so disappointed I didn't roll well. I rolled, like, piss poor. Yeah. It happens sometimes. I wanted to put the whole world <laughs> with 500 feet around me to sleep, and you only be woken up by a specific condition. Uh, such as 100 one? years passing. Is that the next one? Yes. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. That would have been fucking great. As the, uh, the situation kind of settles down and the sailors go back to work, you spot a man in like a, a nice kind of yellow coat with a big tricorn hat and he's got a bushy beard and full set of hair stepping out onto the deck and shouting some orders at the sailors and kind of is your ship okay captain hi it is and uh, who do i have the pleasure of speaking with bindel l johnson wizard extraordinaire ah I thought you were just an extremely large man. I saved one of your sailors earlier from being hung. I appreciate it. Snail Shell Zarathusa at your service. Captain of the Latapan. Okay. Nice to meet you. So what brings you to these parts, Spindel? Oh, I'm here on a quest for treasure like all the other adventurers. Ah, man after me own heart. But uh, I'm just trying to make sure things settle around the t city before I go about my business. Listen, my friend, you seem like a man of some capability. Sure. From what I've heard, the amount of treasure up in there is uh, going to be more than one man can carry by himself. And I am, of course, as interested as, in the, as the next man in getting a bit of the treasure myself. So, uh, if you need any additional equipment on your journey, I'd be happy to offer you some, and even offer you a payment of 500 gold for any information you can provide me from the lands upriver. From what I've heard in whispers, it's going to be quite a changed landscape once you get past the dam. I'll keep that in mind. And if you find yourself in need of a boat, I can offer you one of my lifeboats. Should be able to take you up river pretty easily. Excellent. I'll uh, once I regroup with the rest of my crew, we'll figure out what we're doing. Sounds good. You know where to find me. Thank you, sir. Valerian has successfully rolled the bodies into the river. Yay! Can he see where any of his companions are from where he is? Um, not immediately, but you know if you 
start walking, you would spot them pretty soon. Okay, so he starts walking. I guess he's, like, towing the Clyde sail. He's not sure if it'll just stay there or get stolen, so he's just, you know. Yeah, smart. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say that the horse will follow Valerian. He's a <laughs> farmer. He knows how to handle horses. Sure. I guess. You're the one in character that told me, like, Clydesdales don't... You don't ride them. You don't. They're for pulling. Yeah, so I just figured you'd know in character. <laughs> yeah. And uh, pretty soon, since uh, Reza was heading back that way anyway, you run into each other. Yeah. Your horse bites. Oh, Tidwell. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's because you named him <clears throat> Tidwell. <laughs> he, like, hands the reins over to you. <sighs> Such as puddles. <laughs> He's going to take the bit of gold out of the pouch and put it in his backpack. Sure. All of it? All of it. So there's... It's dust though, right? But anyways. So you put it in a little pouch. Oh, okay. Cool. And it is gold dust. So what's the plan now? We should uh, get back with each other. Or, yeah, reunite with the rest of the party. It's been weird. I, it's been a pretty normal day for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well... We gotta go find a magic spoon. A so, magic spoon? Yeah, apparently that's what's gonna feed everybody. <clears throat> what does a spoon have to do with all of this? You know, it's been a weird day for me, okay? Uh, some golems. Anyways, let me just start walking. Alright, I guess eventually you all just sort of meet back up in the center of town. Failed at casting a spell in the day. It still worked, but it did. didn't do what I you wanted. You failed, but it worked. I failed to meet the Bindel standard. Oh, I see. Is Bindel small yet? Or regular size? How long did it last for? 40 minutes. Uh, no. (laughs) No, he's still huge. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have... It's wearing off any moment. Don't worry about it, Bindel. It happens to you as you get older. (laughs) Bindel shrinks to normal size right now. Don't work. And things like that happen. I am an immortal wizard. (laughs) Okay. The immortal crunch. Oh. Oh, all right. Okay. Sure. Shouldn't test. So I found you just kill a trent and you shave off the little bits of its bark and then you distill that into a pure potion of light. I feel like you, you bragged you about a lot of weird things up until this point. If Trent was on the list, I would have heard it already. That is a hundred percent factual what I just told you. You read it in a book, yes? I know how to do it. He knows how to do it, but hasn't done it. Well, you have not found Trent. Yet. Precisely. Sure. Other things work too. Trent's just like the easy one. Uh, uh, I, it turns out there were people digging up bodies and eating them. Mm-hmm. I found a place where Bef- you can get a boat. Before or after the flood? Oh, your place, after. what's your place? My place will probably charge. Is that the a mayor's... normal reaction to a flood? Just eating people? I don't think so, but... Okay. The um, mayor, I saved her, and she offered me bill. That's probably a skiff that can carry all Oh, we know how to use a skiff, too. That's good, yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. To be fair, we should keep our eyes out, because I saved her from... Let's see, what was his name? Pasta Alfredo and Jam? Alfredo uh, Jam. Alfredo something. He was a big guy, and he had two other guys and a bunch of other guys. A whole mercenary crew. Uh, it was very loud and very full of so, himself. How many guys were there in total? Three and three and six scouts, I think. So it was like 12. 12, 12, 12 guys, huh? Only three of them were really worth noting. Mm. One was a big, muscly guy, and the oh. other was a woman short. So I, I found a place where we can buy equipment and stuff if we need, that's so great. That's, that's good. They're heading the same direction we are, so we'll likely encounter them. Everyone's going like that direction. Yeah, I heard there were like these two wizards, one wearing some weird, like, Floppy magic hat. <gasps> I don't want a floppy magic hat. It would go with my my glowy magic crystal. Oh, it looks like a light bulb. <laughs> it's called a light bulb. Exactly. <laughs> tell tell Bindel about the spoon. Oh yeah, there's this bishop talking about a spoon that the optical god like lost. What the hell is an optical god? Uh, it's what they worship here. The the church and and the priest we saved was declared for the optical god. He's like a lens. It, the rays shine down from Okay, so this optical god has a spoon that he lost? That the church lost? Someone stole? S- someone stole it, took uh, it, because they were in like a daze. 
one was very suicidal. The other two were kind of just. So we have to find along. a magic spoon, or we don't have to. But if we find if a magic find spoon, a magic spoon, it's gonna basically help repair this uh, town. Also, the mayor offered to pay us five thousand gold to give a detailed report of what we find there, and uh, will give us a bonus one thousand if we can provide evidence that there is nothing there. Okay. That's pretty good. So, so we just take everything. And then that tell them nothing. there was nothing there. Well, yeah. there would be nothing because we would have everything. Right. So we have to take everything. Trickle down economics. So do we want to head out today? What time is it? Uh, a little afternoon. I mean, we might as well go upstream somewhat because... We're not going to find an inn here. I did promise we would look for the church on our way there, because it was at, up at the river on the way. Um, just to, because the cleric I saved, he does not know what state his church is in. Okay. And we could rest there, right? Actually, that might be a good idea. Yeah, let's invite ourselves into that church. I'm still looking for that witch. Wait, do I know about that? Or did he only tell you that? That was... Actually, yeah, but something? he said that to you. Oh, yeah, I don't he said it that to that me. That was <coughs> when we were together, though, and then split. That's a good point. Uh... She also look out for, what was she, in a, she drowned her in a well? Oh, this child told me about a witch that needs to be killed so a ninth trying time. To eat the children or something? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we have to kill a witch? We have to kill a witch, basically. But we can't... Kill um, it the same way. She, she can't die the same way twice. I remember her as being stabbed. So okay. I wrote down some of the things. Could I share those with Paul out of character? And then no. no. Okay. All right. Do you think if we went and looked at the townspeople, you could re-identify that child? That sounds like an important list. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Look, uh, what are the odds someone killed her with a magic missile? That seems pretty low. Come on. She's got, she's a witch. I got magic missiles. I got magic missiles for days. Fine. Even if I lose magic missiles, my staff's got magic missiles. We can strangle. I think maybe that might have been one of the ways she died. Well, didn't you just say drowned? Yeah, but drowned is like a hug from God. And strangling <laughs> is like... <laughs> what is wrong with you? you, know, you know, is it like a genetic thing you were born with? Or were you dropped on your head as a child? Was destroyed and therefore they what? couldn't breathe. What if they can't breathe being the way they died, being that they can't breathe, period? I Plus, suppose. If, they, if she's been killed eight times, do you think beat to death was one of those? Probably, yes. Come on. I know a bunch of kids killed her somehow. Kids? Yeah. All right, let's get to the goddamn You should skip. never get goats involved in murder. What? Children. He said, he said kids. He's weird for children. That's, that's better. Or, or young goats. That's... It's a hominum. Well, no. You should never get goats involved in murder, but human children, So your goat is not... I don't know. That goat looks like it's seen some shit. <laughs> the goat goes... <laughs> you talking shit? <laughs> he might be. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? All right, let's, let's, uh, let's get the skiff. Let's go up river. Let's find this church. Let's go to the place. Let's get killed by its immortal guardians. And then... Killed by an immortal, that would be amazing. And then, uh, you know, I'll go put some posters up or whatever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's just like your thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you retrieved the skiff. Um, how are you going to be traveling vis-a-vis -vis your animals? <sighs> yeah, I assume uh, the, the skiff isn't big enough to hold all of us and a Clydesdale horse. Uh, no. <laughs> we just have to stand on one side so it doesn't flip. Well, we actually have three animals with us. You just haven't yeah. seen the third one yet. <gasps> Mandel has a gerbil. <laughs> or a hamster. Oh, God. Is it Richard That's Gere how he that? pushes it. He pushes the tome out without the chain. Oh, God! <laughs> I hate this! It guards the book. I hate this! Oh, it just stands behind your butt with a spear. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad I uh, planted uh, that seed. Yeah, so what are you doing about your horse? I will take the necessary things. Rations. Um, is there someone in town that I could, like, like a stable? Could rent or something? The local inn usually has a stable. 
Okay. Is the inn still there? Exactly. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what I'm wondering. What's left? We could. Uh, the inn is not intact. You know, what? I'll take it back to the church where I was hailed as the spoon quester. Avatar, you've returned. Yo, need to keep my horse somewhere. <laughs> Oh. Can you do me a solid? I got feed for it. I just need, you know. He's the horse atar. Well, it is quite an unusual request, but for you, of course. This is all so we can get that spoon back. I, uh, absolutely. All right. We will guard it better than we guarded the spoon. <laughs> Sweet. Look, nobody's looking for this guy. Not Tidwell. How's the bishop? He's calmed down a lot. Cool. He's talking about trying to organize a sermon for the survivors of the flood. Hey, that's dope. Yeah. You should make it a potluck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if only we had the food. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Horse of habits. I uh, do the yee, <laughs> yee, yee, and then you just hear a skittering. Yeet. <laughs> yee. <laughs> yee. Okay, now we all get on the skiff and... Is there room enough for the goat to join? If there's not room for Pothos, he's not getting on the skiff. Could the Asian man have the goat in his lap? Can I carry the goat? Yeah, I mean, it's not that big, right? Goats aren't huge. I mean, he weighs like 40 pounds. It would it would suck, I but... It's like a dog. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say you can carry the goat in your lap <laughs> as you ride. He carries... He puts Pothos in his lap like how you see people sitting their dogs like facing the same direction as them and wraps his arms around the goat's belly and the goat seems totally 100% okay with this as if they maybe have done this many, many times. It's once or twice before. It's a teacup goat? Which is a small one? No. <laughs> in your satchel? It's a Nubian. <laughs> okay. It's a breed of goat. Okay. They're the best because they are the ones with the big floppy ears. They're goats without floppy ears? Yeah. yeah. Most goats. Okay. Uh, I'm not familiar <laughs> with most goats. Paul's He's, upset. Well, Paul's not familiar with animals. It's something you need to know about Paul. <laughs> it's like a... He's getting yes. better. So what does that mean? mean? I had to learn how to cat. Like, it was really hard. Yeah, he doesn't... He just never grew up with animals, really, so... I yeah, that's the no that's standard goat for me. Okay. That's... All right, dude, so he would die at the... Mindel, uh, is, I guess, pushing the... Skip? Skip for rowing. <laughs> All right. The so last of his journey. Poles or oars? Yeah. Or is that a little uh, sail? Uh, I assume poles for yeah, Skip. It would, be, yeah. it would be probably uh, Petra and Bindel because they've done this before. So, yep. as, uh, as you depart the town of Karamor, uh, so the entire valley is flooded pretty much, but uh, the water is deepest and moving fastest along the old course of the river, which is all, yeah, it's where it's deepest, I already said that. Uh, away from the river, it does get um, shallower, like it gets uh, eventually waist deep, then knee deep. The water of the river is ripe with life, uh, over full with predators and fish of every kind. Pike and strange pale squid flit to and fro. Cuttlefish can barely be seen. Camouflage flows across their pigmented skin like paint. And of course, upriver in the distance rises a column of smoke or perhaps gray cloud. And the only other sign to mark the sky are carrion birds. Columns of their moving forms make black signals in the gray air, sketching spirals over the accumulated dead. Does that mean the water is brackish? Yes. It, that means salty because it's a mix. It means a mix of salt water and well, fresh yes. water because yeah, cuttlefish. As we, go, as we go upstream, it should be less brackish, I would assume. Yes. All right, so we so, will... Go our way up, not sticking to the deepest part as much as possible. Yeah, in the shallower so we can have the... Yeah, so we won't have to fight so we as can much. Hold the, yeah, and the current won't be as bad. So, uh, as you've left the town, uh, not very far from the town, maybe ten minutes or so of skiffing, you can see two men standing on the surface of the water without any apparent support facing off against each other. A big fat guy and a skinny guy with a weird hat. They are. How did you know? And uh, there's actually a canoe bobbing the water nearby as they're facing off against each other and it seems to be uh, at the beginning of a, a showdown between the two of them. Uh, hello, fellow magi. 
Stay back. This is none of your business. It's we are going to settle the things between us. <laughs> Only one of us can have the canoe. <laughs> it is always my business when otherwise great minds stoop to meaningless violence, fighting for small and petty possessions. It isn't meaningless or petty. I can't stand this fat oaf one more second, and I'm going to put an end to him once and for all. And I don't just stay out of it. Couldn't one of you just go back and get a different boat? And let him get ahead of me? <laughs> no. It is as he says, he must die. Now how about you? Uh, Valerian leans over to Petra and goes, Couldn't one of them get on our boat? I think we're pretty squeezed in as it is. I was actually thinking about that. We could do like, you know, one gets on our boat, one gets on their boat, and then we go out. That yeah, way. let the little guy get on our boat. Get, let the fat guy have his own boat. They're already fighting, but I mean... Perhaps. We could still stop it. I mean, we can... Is there any magic spell you could do? Perhaps if uh, you, sir, she says to the skinny guy with the floppy... It's to cast magics on another mage when they're in the middle of a ma- Would you like game. to join our boats in your... Yeah, but you're trying to keep the peace. Help them be civilized. No, no. There's rules for this. Okay, prison pocket master. <laughs> your secrets are your own. <laughs> they're like about to start fighting when you say that. And he's like... He called me petty. He did not call you petty. No, I'm he, going to kill this fat man. No, he, called, done with he it. called you pretty. Do you like my hat? I actually do like your it's hat. It's a, a great lot. hat, really. It is a stupid hat. Uh, now, there's no need to be made. How dare you? What would a fat bastard like you know about headwear? How dare you? That's it. I'm getting it on this tool. Oh! Whoa. <laughs> he stands up. Everybody tips out of the boat. All right, roll initiative. What? Uh, what the hell? I'm just going to be on hand to heal Bindel if he needs it, but mostly we're just going to try to keep the boat from tipping. Uh, 11. <laughs> Bindel just wants that hat. No, it's because they're talking shit. Yes. <clears throat> Bindel won't back down. Okay. The fat man goes first. I forgot to mention. All right, let me let me give you these this okay. description because it's, it's pretty good. All right, so he's uh, well dressed and has a scarf like a tongue of flame. And as for the other one, he has a hat like a collapsed flam. He's also anemic and bedraggled. I want his scarf and I want his hat. They both have to die. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um. All right. This sucks. Did they have to die? I know, right? The fat man begins casting magic missile. Would you like to counterspell? No. Uh, the tiny man is going to counterspell with shield. Okay. So he's gonna take some cross referencing here. So I believe they both cast. They both roll their casting. Okay, so they both start at 10. So, uh, yeah, and he, so he's casting Magic Missile, and the other one is counterspelling with uh, Magic Shield. Wow. These guys, uh, they don't get along, but they should, because they're really in sync. They got the same roll. That means they go to the special table. Oh, yeah. All right. They could literally just be, they could summon a demon that will just kill everyone. Yeah. <laughs> No, neither spell happens when that happens, right? Correct. Okay. All right. So the large man starts his casting for magic missile. The tiny man starts casting for magic shield. And then there's just a noise like... And they just vanish. And a scarf and a floppy hat <gasps> fall to the ground. How convenient. Oh, man. I go and get the scarf and the floppy hat. So now that you're up there, you realize that uh, they weren't standing on the surface of the water. Uh, there's a, a bridge that's very shallowly sunken under the, under water. the water that they were just standing on. So you, uh, you can just climb up there and you can retrieve the uh, sweet. accessories. I could have I stuffed over there. <laughs> Not from the You boat. could have. Well, once the fighting started, since they were focused on each other. Uh, well, I mean, 
We never even got to a second round. <laughs> <laughs> we never even finished the first round. <laughs> yeah, I've been down that we even got a turn. Oh, I put them on. Now I have a stupid floppy hat and a cool scarf. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're cursed. It makes you have to speak Dutch. <laughs> you over there. <laughs> Let go of so, my baguette. Is that... If nothing else happens? No. All right, I guess that's uh, as good a place as any to end our episode of Dorker Realms, and we'll continue up river next time. Continue up Thanks for listening. That does it for today's episode of Dorker Realms. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly of all, tune in next week.